Hi, welcome back to yet another pod. You're here with the California cowboy himself, me. Did I just try to get off a brand new nickname for myself? Maybe. Would I be upset if you called me it? Absolutely not. I don't feel like I have the resume to call myself a true cowboy, but a California cowboy, perhaps. And if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Let's get into the business side of the podcast. Birding. It's a topic that I've been talking about, I've been threatening to do since the beginning of the year. It still has not happened because Mother Nature is against me. Every time I'm ready to rock and roll, I look at the weather report, storming. We're having the storm of the century here in San Diego. It's supposed to rain for five days straight. How the hell am I supposed to go and look at birds when it's raining? Birds don't want to be out there in the water unless they're water birds. Are fish just birds in the water? Maybe. Probably not. A little more research, that's probably not not true. But nonetheless, it's been wet outside. I have not been able to go out and check out the birds. I've been huddled up in here. People are canoeing to work at this point. The streets are flooded. Our city is just absolutely not made for the rain. It's ridiculous, honestly. It rains like half an inch and you're swimming. It's crazy. The drain's not working. You would assume everything just slide out into the ocean. No, absolutely not. It's way more complex than that for absolutely no reason. So as soon as the weather permits, I will go hunting for birds. Now, if you haven't listened to any of the other podcasts, when I say hunting for birds, I'm just I'm just hunting with my eyes. I'm not going to harm any birds. I just want to see them. I'm hunting to see them. That is the new series that will be coming out as soon as I can. So until I actually go out and bird, I will shut up about it. I promise. I know you're on the edge of your seat. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I will shut up about it until it actually happens. And I'll be like, yo, I went birding. Okay. So that's the business side of that. As far as the fish tanks go, everyone is happy. Everyone is healthy. Everyone is thriving in their tanks. Tank tour this week. The wait is over. Tank tour this week. I've been filming it over the last week. If you like fish, you're going to love the tank tour. So prepare your heart, prepare your mind, and prepare your soul for the tank tour coming this week. We also have the Super Bowl this Sunday, so I will most definitely be predicting the Super Bowl. I did go back into my archives of videos, and before the football season even began, I predicted that the 49ers would be in the Super Bowl, and they would win the Super Bowl. So I'm going to stick with that, most likely. We'll see. I might, I'm, I've been waffling all week. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. When I do my due diligence this week, I will make a definitive decision and then move forward from there. But so far, it's feeling that way. Because that would be kind of cool to predict that before the season even began. I did say the Jets would be in the Super Bowl too. Who would have known? Fourth play of the season, Aaron Rodgers out for the year. Who would have freaking known? But I digress. So big content week. I mean, you're watching this video. This video came out this week. Two more coming out later in the week. Let's roll tide. On the last pod, I said that I was going to go see Portugal the Man with Georgie and my wife. And we had a bonus person come. We had Nancy come. You guys don't know Nancy yet, but Nancy is a fun person. She's a teacher and she loves Taylor Swift. That's all you need to know. That's all you really need to know. Taylor Swift is the way to Nancy's heart. Anyway, we went to Portugal the Man. We went to a venue called The Sound in Del Mar. I had never been. I had never really been to Del Mar. I always passed Del Mar on my way up in North County or going to LA or going back home. So we go, nobody is there. And we're there like 10 minutes before doors, which normally for me, I'm not the guy that's there at doors, but it's one of my favorite bands. You know what? I think I will definitively make this statement. As of this moment, and it is subject to change, but as of this moment, Portugal the Man is my favorite band. So I was there at Doors to see my favorite band. No one's in the parking lot. I'm getting hyped. I'm like, whoa. It says it's sold out online. But maybe nobody came. Maybe bots bought all of the tickets. I don't know. If I get an intimate performance with Portugal the Man, your boy is a happy camper. So we wait for a few moments, get inside, hit the merch table right away. As you can see, I also have a sweatshirt. I'm sure it will debut at some other point. That way I have more than one sweatshirt that I wear all the time. Merch was, merch was great. That they had some stuff that was just for this tour, and that made me very happy because if I can just buy it online, I don't want it. I want something that I can only get there. Then you can put it online later. That's fine. The masses can have it, but I want to be the first because we were the first stop of the tour for Portugal the Man. So very exciting. 
I understand the benefits and the drawbacks now after going to the show. So get in line, get the merch, and then we cruise into the actual area where performances will be happening. And we are literally five feet away from the stage. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I've never been this close to any performance. Let's go. So I guarded the place that I stood with my life. I would not move a muscle. I had to go to the bathroom super bad. And I finally did cave, but I had George and Nancy and Macy there to hold my spot for me. Made it back. People were getting mad because I was like moving past them. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go see my friends. And they're like, yeah, that's what everybody says. I'm like, no, but I actually am. I promise. I've been here since doors. Nobody cares. So the opener comes on and the opener is called Snack Time. I have never listened to Snack Time. I've heard of them in passing. I've seen them on other flyers. I've seen them open for other bands. So I went into it super blunt and they kind of rocked. It's like a seven piece band and they do um, brass instruments, like or orchestral instruments that are pretty dope. We had a trombone, we had a sousaphone, we had a saxophone, we had a trumpet, obviously drums, guitar, vocals, all that. It was a great time. For those of you who don't know, I was in symphonic band for a very long time and I played the sousaphone slash tuba and the trombone. If my band teacher would have told me that I could do what Snack Time was doing, I probably would have kept playing the sousaphone or the trombone. I probably would have went a lot harder during my practice time. But I thought, man, this is just a waste of my time. And so I quit. But they rocked it. It was really cool. It was a fantastic time. Initially, listening to their music and knowing what Portugal demands music sounds like, I was like, these are these are very different things. So I, I don't quite understand why they're the opener. They, they were good. They had a good time, great energy, all that. But I didn't quite understand. And for me, I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like if there's an opener for any band that you like, the opener has a job. They've got to win me over as the fan. I don't know them. I don't care about them because I don't know them. And so their job is to win me over, get me hyped, get me primed, get me ready for the band that I'm there to see. And I feel like Snack Time won me over. Second song, I was won over. I was all in. I was dancing. I was vibing. It was a great time. I think that Snack Time was a fantastic opener. And as the show progressed, I realized why they are touring with Portugal the Man. Because once their set was done, Portugal the Man comes out and Snack Time comes back. And then Snack Time essentially performed the entire set with Portugal the Man. So they did a full set of their own, which was great, good time. And then they played for the whole set of Portugal the Man. And they added such a fantastic element to it. I have so much respect for everyone in that band. You should check out Snack Time. They're a good time, real good time. But I have so much respect because they essentially played like a three hour show and they had great energy the entire time. They didn't seem fatigued. They, they were just, they were doing it. They were killing it. They were, they were the MVPs of the night. So getting into Portugal the Man. Like I said last time, I was curious to see what kind of folks were going to be there. And I can't really put my finger on one specific type of person that was there. It was all kinds of different people. Different age, different backgrounds, everything. It was a, it was a melting pot for sure. And so I, I did enjoy that. There were some people that were there in the area that we were that I was not a fan of. And I'm going to be honest, they frustrated me. This one very short person, no shade to short people, but very short person. It's, it's, it's part of the story, trust. Jumped, like s squeezes between us like a little snake to get in front of us. And then starts jumping up and down with their hands like this. And they're just covering my line of sight. And I was like, yo, I get that we both paid for the show. But you were jumping up and down behind me, bouncing into my back. And that's fine. That's to be expected with general admission. But you should have just stayed back there. You can you can, you can, can kind of creep between. Like, I, I, I am that tall person that everyone's frustrated with at shows. But I've earned that right as a human being. Because when I was a kid, I couldn't see anything couldn't see anything. So I willed myself to grow so that I could see at concerts and different events. So that, that happened for a little while. And then her friends were like, hey, you're kind of being a lot. So maybe come back and be with the friend group. So she did. And thank the Lord for that. Then 
we had those this group of people, the group of people that's at every concert, that just is a, a little too inebriated or a little too hyped on uh, certain substances that were just going ham. Between every song, this one man would scream profanities at the band and tell them that he hated the music that they were playing, which I can understand if you are not a fan of the newer songs, which is what they were performing. They were performing the newer albums mostly, which makes sense because they're touring for them. But this man is just screaming between songs. Then he all of a sudden is swing dancing like 1930s, 1920s. I don't even know what year it was when they were flipping people around and swinging and all this crazy stuff. He's swing dancing with his girl and she's bouncing into me. And I'm like, dude, I understand, you know, you're going to you're going to rub elbows with some people. You're going to bump into people. You're at the show. You're having a good time. But to be essentially body slamming me every five minutes, I almost lost it. I almost lost it, but I held my composure. I had a moment to myself. I closed my eyes and I said, you know what? I can either be really frustrated by all these different things that are happening around me, or I can be grateful that I am here and I am seeing my favorite band and I am five feet away from them performing. So once I centered myself, I blocked out all the noise. It was like noise canceling moment pure serenity and i just dove fully in and had a great time as far as the set list goes like i said it was newer songs which i'm a fan of so i don't have complaints there i can understand people who feel otherwise you could definitely tell it was the first show of the tour there were some flubs here and there but i like that myself i feel like if I wanted to listen to the album and it be exactly perfect and exactly how it was recorded, then I would play it in my car. But I'm going to the show to see them. I'm going to show, I'm going to the show to see some personality, to see some mistakes and to see how they handle mistakes and have a good time and just have fun. And so I enjoy that kind of stuff, but I can understand why other people are like, ah, I didn't really like that. I feel like this could have been better. I think that the show is just going to continue to be good as they tweak it. And as time goes on, I enjoyed it. The venue itself, good time, really small venue. I did like that they're at a small venue. For sure was the smallest venue that I've seen them at. It was good. I would give the overall experience 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 because of those wild people dropping it down a couple notches and me having to center myself. But all in all, good time. My favorite aspect of the show, though, I will say. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, but I hate this unspoken rule that shows have where the performer goes and they do their last song and then they walk off the stage and then everyone sits there and chants for five or ten minutes to get them to do an encore and play one or two more songs. I'm like, dude, we all know you're coming out no matter what. We all know you're coming out. Just play the damn songs and let's let's make that the finale and let's go home. Let's not waste five to ten minutes. Let's just let's just get this done. And Portugal the man was like, hey, this is our last song. They performed it. And then they laughed a little bit and then just performed five more songs. They didn't go through the whole hoops of the encore. They just they played the finale and it was a good time. And the lights went on and I knew it was time to go home. I didn't have to sit there and wait and hope and pray that they'd come back out. I respect that. Every show I've been to, they've done that. They're just like, yeah, there's the last song. We're done. I love that. If I could end encores, oh boy, I would end encores. So that, that is that is my, if you, if you agree with me, that's, you know, if you've been to a show where the encore just goes on for a little bit too long, you understand. You understand. that. that but I, I digress. I digress. So sticking sticking with music, because, you know, we talk about music more than anything right now. Grammys happened. I... Didn't watch. I haven't watched the Grammys in a really long time. I'm not protesting them or anything like that. I just, I don't find them entertaining. If I want to see someone perform, I can watch the YouTube video later. But they're, most of the people that are up there performing are people that are, nobody knows. The people that are in categories for different things, nobody knows. And it feels like it, it is, it's been out of touch for a long time. And so I, I'm just going to get what I need out of it via YouTube and then move on. But all that being said, Zach Bryan, 
is a Grammy Award winning artist now. They song with Casey Musgraves, they won a Grammy. And that brings so much joy to my heart. I love Zach. I want nothing but the best for Zach. So congratulations to Zach Bryan on his Grammy. Shout out. Not a day one, but I'm here for the rest of the days, baby. And as we sort of wind our time together down, we jump into the favorite segment, Discover Weekly. Boy, I was listening to my Discover Weekly this week, and I was 20 songs deep. There's only 30 songs on there. 20 songs deep, and I hate every song that they're playing for me. I'm like, dude, there's got to be one good song in here. And there wasn't. Absolute trash this week in my Discover Weekly. I will not put any of the artists or songs on blast, but it was absolute trash. My camera definitely died. Remind me next time to charge my battery. Luckily, I've got more than one battery, but we're back at it. Discover Weekly. Absolute trash. But I couldn't leave you guys empty-handed. I won't. I went through my liked songs, which I have way too many liked songs, and I need to put them in the playlist, but it came in clutch this time. So the first song that I recommend by a band that everybody does know, but I don't know if they've heard this song. It's The Killers and their song, Your Side of Town. I guess they put out an album last year that's like their greatest hits. And then there was three original songs in there. And this was one of the original songs. It has a sound that reminds me of Daft Punk. And I am all about it. Daft Punk and The Killers, not two things you would put together. But this song, magical, great time. If you just want to have it on in the back of a party, mm, mm, it's game over. Another song I'll throw your way is Only You by Travis Stacy. Travis Stacy doesn't have a bunch of music out, but this song, banger. I don't want to even describe the song. I want you to experience it for yourself. Go check out Only You, Travis Stacy. It is a great time. You will not regret it. I listen to his other songs that he has. They're not for me, but this one is for me. And if this is the only song that I ever like by him, I am very pleased. And I, I need nothing more. And my final recommendation, a song that actually just came out recently, Secret Place by Tommy Newport. If you do not know about Tommy Newport, you know how I feel about Zach Bryan? That's how I feel about Tommy Newport. Tommy Newport is a stud. His music is so good, much different than Zach Bryan. His music is more poppy for sure and has just great grooves. I would highly recommend checking out Tommy Newport. I don't think that the man has missed yet. He has a few albums out. He's got some EPs out, lots of singles. Highly recommend Tommy Newport. I'm gonna be making a video just about the man. That's, that's how, how devoted I am. But his single that just came out, Secret Place, Chef's Freaking Kiss. It has been on repeat in my household. It has been on repeat at work. I'm just, at anyone who will listen, I'll talk to him about Tommy Newport. So if you haven't checked out Tommy Newport, check him out. He actually just did a feature on 21 Savage's new album, which also check out 21 Savage's album if you haven't. It is a great time. I really like it. I realize I haven't really talked about hip hop on here. I, I love, I love hip hop. That's how I cut my teeth was with hip hop. And then I found out about Indian rock and all this other stuff, but cut my teeth on hip hop. 21 Savage's newest album is so laid back. It is very J. Cole-esque as far as the tone goes. Would recommend, but Tommy Newport is featured on a song and it is, and it's fantastic. I think we're going to call it there. Thank you so much for listening. If you did make it to the end of the video, shout out to you. All the gold stars are yours. I appreciate your time. I appreciate every single one of you who supports me and continues to support me. If you have any song recommendations, things that you think I would enjoy or other people on the channel would enjoy, throw them down in the comments. I just want this to be, you know, a community where we exchange things that we love. Hopefully I survive this storm that's happening and I don't get washed away. Uh, so if I never make another video again, you know that I had to jump into Noah's Ark and move on. But until next time.